Um, I guess Anderson Cooper couldn't make it, so. <laughs> it's okay. So, both of you are lawyers, right? right? Don't hold that against us. Okay, no. Uh, you were in Paris enjoying food because yeah. lawyers can enjoy food. And then, I think we're in 1979, you go back to New York, and there's not a way to find out how to get to a good restaurant. Nobody's telling you any hint. Well, the New York Times and every newspaper had one person telling us, but very often we didn't think they were accurate in terms of our own experience. And we thought it was obvious that if you had everybody here sharing their experiences, uh, you'd be more accurate than having one person. So that was an idea, and you went to get it. That's right. We also thought that it was important to separate the different parts of an experience. Food, decor, service, cost, all of those elements are different for people when they're making a choice, depending on who they're with, what their budget is, etc. So you have a lot of friends who like to go out and eat too, and, that's, and that was that were the first people you yeah, asked, that's... please help, let's put that thing together, As right? As young lawyers, everybody we knew practically went out to eat regularly, and we didn't see why they shouldn't have a chance to express themselves as well as the individual critic. I mean, it, last time I looked, most critics don't have more taste buds than the rest of us. Okay, so the, they were probably happy too because you gave them a voice, right? So everybody That's likes right. to have an opinion. That's right. And you gave them a free copy of whatever it was called at the beginning because it wasn't even a book, right? It was, no, it was just sheets a sheet of, of paper. And they were happy just getting the sheets of paper. That's right. And, and the point wasn't to say, you've got to try this place or that place. It was to give you the information so that you could make the decision that was right for you. Okay, so you came with the idea of surveying restaurants, but uh, you needed a questionnaire, right? So a format, to, so everybody will do pretty much the same, right? That's right. And what was that questionnaire about? Well, it was two sides of a legal sheet of paper. We just had them printed up with names of restaurants that we knew of and places for people to give their ratings for the food decor service cost and to give us a few words of a pithy witty comment. One that the, we would weave together to be the review. One of the things we were trying to do, besides be more accurate, was be concise, so that you didn't have to read 500 words to decide whether you want to go to lunch somewhere. And when do you get the idea of rating from 1 to 30? Why not 25 or 10 or 100 or what, why 30? We came up with the idea and it works. <laughs> All right. That's a fair answer. So. Um, the thing started working, people were enjoying your guide, more and more people were asking for that, and then you decide, oh, let's go to a publisher, right? They're gonna love our idea, they're gonna publish the book, and we're gonna make a That's survey. right, we're busy practicing law all day, let's get somebody else to publish the guide. Well, it didn't work that way. Well, there's we, plenty of publishers in New York. You bet, and we went to see all of them, and with great introductions, and they all said, this is a ridiculous idea. Uh, I, I had don't... two publishers that reported to be at the time in my business. So when they turn you down, you know you got a problem. And, and their answers all revolved around three points. They said nobody wants to hear what other people have to say. They want to hear from the experts. Your idea is ridiculous. This little guide is just going to get lost in bookstores. It doesn't have weight. It won't make people feel they're really paying for something. And it's local. Who wants local information? People want to buy books that are national in scope. So that, those were the reasons, fundamentally, that we were turned down. And life today shows they were very wrong. Yeah, that makes me think when I uh, tried to hire my cleaning lady candidate to be the movie reviewer of our radio show, <laughs> they said no way, but uh, ended up that she was the only critic that loved the same movies that the, pub the public did. So it was a great success. You know, so anyways. Same thing. <laughs> so no, pu no by publisher. By the way, you should know that yeah, we yeah. do surveys of movies, theater, all kinds of other things. We're best known for restaurants, of course. Okay, so no publisher. And then you go home and decide to do what? We, if they're not gonna do it, we're gonna have to do okay. it. Okay. And of course, we were very lucky they didn't want to do it because we ended up with a business as opposed to getting royalties from a publisher. We'd have gotten 10 to 20% if we were lucky. And when they turned us down, we got 100%. Okay. And you, the first uh, print was 7,500? Yeah. yeah. And then, 
pretty soon a nice customer approached you guys, right? Well, we kept on going up, and then around the fifth year, uh, we got a call from Bank of America who... God bless Bank of America. God bless Bank of America. <laughs> Yeah, we'll know the you reason know, right now. Uh, Bank of America called and said, could we give them five million copies? And we said, we sure would be happy to try. Do you have any doubt? No, you just say... Tim made one mistake. Sell them 5,000 yeah, yeah. million copies. To do what with them? What were we going to do the bank with those copies? They were giving them out to their clients. In fact, we had uh, hundreds of companies, major companies, that were giving out copies to their customers and uh, found that it was good marketing tools. People got the books with the company name stamped on the cover. Okay, so companies, uh, average people like your uh, survey because they could know about restaurants, decor, food, service, price, whatever. And you guys were editing that thing and put it in the, in the Zagat, but uh, I'm sure there was plenty of things that you guys didn't, I mean, weren't able to put on the guide. I, I don't think every single comment was probably PC, right? No, well, some of them were definitely not PC, but we have them listed on our website under a category called takeouts. All right. And they're things that uh, we believe would create libel suits. And for, just for example, this restaurant is known as Ebola Cafe. <laughs> or I took a doggy bag home, my dog refused it. <laughs> or filled with flowers and all the things that make flowers grow. There was one, <laughs> there was, there was one that we, I, I asked the women editors if we should put it in because I thought it was risque. And it was, if, it was about a restaurant called One If By Land, Two If By Sea in New York where you can recognize the restaurant because half the men there are on their knees offering little boxes uh, to women. <coughs> and the review was perfectly fine, but the last line was, if this place doesn't get you laid, nothing will. <laughs> <laughs> and we, I, I, it turned out I was, more sen I was more sensitive to people's feelings than the women editors were because we got immediately hundreds of, of letters complaining. But the angriest letter was from a man who had said we didn't live up to our representations. <laughs> <laughs> so your background as a lawyer did help you out to uh, create a business in... Oh, absolutely. I mean, we knew that when we went to see printers and they told us that it would take three months to get a book printed and we had experience turning around legal documents in one day, that it wasn't a matter of not being able to do it, it was a question of how much you were willing to pay, so that somewhere in between there would be the right place for us. So there were lots of different ways where we knew that things could be done, and so then we'd have to figure out what we could afford and what made sense for our business. Because your idea was a little weird at the time, uh, even the size of the book, right? I right. mean, a book has a shape, and then you came with a shape. Right. And probably publishers didn't like that either, right? No, they didn't, because no. they thought that it would get lost on bookshelves. So we came up with making a Lucite container that would fit right next to the cash register that would be the same size as the guide, and it would have prominent placement and would stand up straight. And why do you want... Basically, we wanted it to be something that any man could put in his pocket and any woman could put in her pocketbook because we realized that people were going to be traveling around and they need to be able, just like a um, cell phone, they need to be able to use it wherever they are, whenever they want. I mean, it was basically a mobile product. Okay, before, before the mobile before time. Mobile. That's right. So to make the long story short, then you get into the digital content, you start doing a lot of content for digital, and then Google came, Right. God bless Google. <laughs> and, and here we are, right? But you're still in charge of the, of the Zagat. We're yes. still doing Zagat at Google and trying to come up with the best possible content. But the one thing Google does is it gives us access to hundreds of millions of people uh, and they can get it for free now. We used to have to charge because uh, it was the only way we could afford to uh, do what we were doing. Now, everything we do, uh, except books, are for free. So everybody can do a survey online? I can survey the food that we have here today if I want to? Go to Sagar or something? Um, I don't think we're the food we're having here today, but okay. we can talk about that technically, afterwards. Technically, you could. Technically, <laughs> it was good, though. Uh, yeah. te technically, you could. 
And we have, <laughs> we, we actually uh, survey all the food in Google and they have 63,000 meals served a day. Uh, within Google, so we are able to do it. It's just a matter of yeah. you want to. I hear you eat so well in Google. You it's have such a wonderful life that people are leaving their apartments and living in the office, right? The, it's part of the reasons. <laughs> part of the reasons why they're so nice and giving you all this free food. They want you to come early and stay late. <laughs> so what's we the? We invite you to come try it out. Okay, well, so um, you've seen the appetite of this country changing through the years, I guess, because I, I seen it. I, I saw people who didn't touch the wine because it was going to give them a headache. And now they know, I mean, the difference between Spanish and Italian and Chilean and name it. And I see the olive oil uh, explosion coming too. And so what's your experience? It's really, it's really been a revolution. Anybody who's been around for a while, and I think I'm around for a longer while than most of the people here, Unfortunately, no. There's a, uh, a guy older in the Okay, line. good. I'm glad there. <laughs> but when I grew up, I thought that raw fish was a fraternity prank. I mean, the idea of sushi bars being all over the country—it's unthinkable. Uh, the choices in food were very, very limited. I thought that basically chicken and beef were about it, and you had potatoes on the side in the summer, you might have string beans or peas. Now you can get green vegetables all year long. You can get things that you never dreamed of. When we first started surveying in 1979, we only had 19 types of cuisine found in New York. We now cover over 90 types of cuisine. Wow. That means that all of us are exposed to more types of food and uh, are able to make up our own minds about whether we like it or not. There's so many specific differences about the food we eat, I, and I really hope that somebody will do a great book on the revolution in food in America, and we have somebody here, uh, I can't see Alice, but uh, <laughs> who has had a lot to do with the revolution in food. So what's the message here uh, today uh, to people who believe in something and have the publisher against, and here you are, uh, friends with Google. If you really passionately believe in something, go for it, and don't let people tell you that your idea makes no sense. You just may be a little further along. This I got. Thank you. <laughs>